Hello everybody, welcome to the third episode or second episode or first episode, I don't know, of the series reacthooksareawesome.com.kr. On this video, we are going to bring a project from the dead. I made this project before, which is the React app uh, for the, whoa, this is super huge. Um, that we did this project on the GraphQL um, course in Nomad Academy that you can take right now. And it's working with a very sexy API called MovieQL that I made, really cool. Um, so what I wanted to do is to take this project from the dead and rewrite it rewrite it, I don't know if you say that in Korean English, into React hooks, because hooks are awesome and it makes it look so much better. So that's what we're gonna do on this video. This is what we're going to use, it's called React Apollo hooks. All right, and you already know about React hooks and how cool it is, but what if I told you that we can use, instead of this ugliest thing, look at this ugliest thing, Look at this home. Instead of this query, query, and then some function with loading data and error, we could have React hooks. It would be amazing, no? I know. So that's what we're going to do. The installation is a little bit different, so we need to keep that in mind. Let's install this real quick. All right, and the provider is different. It's not going to be React Apollo. It's going to be React Apollo hooks. So let's do that. Oh shit, you need both of them, look. You need React Apollo and you need both of them, cool. All right, so let's do that on app. Is it an app? Yeah. So here on app, we need Apollo provider as Apollo hooks provider. And it's also need the client. I think this implementation is kind of shitty, like not shitty, but it's very experimental. I think people did it because they, they were like, oh my God, I wanna use hooks everywhere kind of thing. So this is how we install it. That's it. And then that's it. Then we can just do use query and it looks so much better. Look at this beauty guys, like guys and girls, because many girls like GraphQL also. So instead of doing this, we can rewrite this and change it. Also, for example, we can use mutations. Where are mutations? Here are mutations. So let's rewrite the first page. Instead of doing home like this, we're gonna open the brackets like that open the brackets like that, let's cut, and we're gonna do return, and return like this, okay, and let's kill the query, we don't want the query, we don't want any of this, so let's kill the query, kill the query, so no more components in your render, I think the render should be for data and not for like uh, higher order components, and here, we're gonna follow the documentation, which is this one, use query. Now, this thing comes with suspend. Suspend is the thing that maybe you saw on a video, or maybe I talk about it on the Slack channel, but suspend is something that doesn't run the query until it's loaded. It's not recommended to use in production, but it's a pretty cool thing. There is a big YouTube talk about it. Maybe you should watch it. It's pretty cool. And suspends, um, as you can see here, it says not provided, not production ready yet, but suspends basically lets you wait for the query to finish and then show the data. What that means is that we will never, ever, ever have to do something like loading and uh, yeah, loading. We can just wait for the data to come and then we actually do it. We're not gonna work with suspense. I think I'm gonna make a video on suspense because it's super sexy and as you can see, you can access it from here, but it's not um, it's not production ready yet, and I don't want any errors on this video. So yeah, but suspend is pretty cool. If you, you if you have used Next.js, suspend is like that. Uh, actually, you can see it here. This one has suspend. As you can see, there is no loading because this will happen only after the data comes or the error comes. Sweet. We're not gonna use it though. So here, let's do. Um, data and error. 
and loading from use query. Woohoo! That will be imported here, and I'm gonna delete the query. There's another query here, and the query has to be the query movie. Nope, not movie details. Homepage. Homepage. And instead of this obvious thing, very bad. We're just gonna do. All right. Uh, yes, so we're gonna say if it's not loading. Okay, cool. And this one, if it's loading, then we're gonna return loading. And if there's an error, then something wrong. And if it's not loading and there is data, because maybe there will be an error, then we're going to do end data that movies. Cool, let's look at my home. Ta-da, motherfuckers. Look at that beauty. And look how much the code improved. There we go. I added this because I sneezed, so I cut and I came back. If data and data that movies, then we're gonna map. But look at how much it improved. Like fuck. Let's go back and see how it was before. Mm, movie QL. One more sneeze coming. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Look at how it changed. Home. So I don't know, but this one doesn't look good. In this example, I think that is not so evident, but if you have worked with GraphQL before, you will see how insanely big the component gets because you have mutations and maybe query and then two queries and it's insane. In this case, you can have as many queries as you want here and you're gonna be good. Um, also, if you don't know, you can change the name of these variables by doing this. In case that you were using, you use many hooks. Let's refactor this one yeah that looks ugly so let's cut bye bye from here look at the variables you see we need a variable so bye bye loading this one is this one stays this one is stay everything is stays actually except the ugly part of the query bye bye and here we do this all right so we're gonna return nope we're not gonna return we're gonna do this const const use query so that will be loading error data use query movie details and then variables is variables here no no use query variables yeah variables what is the variables of this query movie id done if loading loading if error error or data that movie that time also valid we could do either this or checking like i check both of them i think are okay let's see U square is not defined. Okay, sorry, I need to import it. Bravo. Loading. Then it works. And it's the same. And it's so much better. Like, look at the difference. You just do this. Let's look at before, at my movie QL before. Detail. You become with this, and then now you have everything on a function, which is a little bit. I have a pain in the ass, but look at that. This just, just do this and you're good. And it's not a component anymore, so it's a function. This looks better. Just use query here, you get the data, you chill out for a bit, you drink your kimchi juice, and then you come here and you finish the thing. Awesome. Um, that's it. This is the video. Sorry if it was too long, but I think it's something you should know. Uh, by the way, I'm working on um, Nomad nomad clone 2000 instagram 2019 with express prisma react and react native and i'm glad to tell you we're going to be using this approach we're going to be using react apollo hooks so you will see how it will improve your code and how the mutations are going to be better it's going to look better uh overall uh that's it i will see you on the next video thank you for watching see you there uh, am i missing something no nothing see you in the next one bye bye